JBN, we keep you informed. Coming up in the news today, tax office cashier, freed of fraud charges. States of emergency still needed to effectively control crime, says Olness. Popular Westmoreland businessman shot dead in Savlamar. Brewing tension between police chief and some cops over new appointment. And which poll is right? Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. Tax office cashier freed of fraud charges. A former cashier at the Savlamar tax office who was accused of issuing a fraudulent motor vehicle registration certificate was freed of the charges last Friday. Derek Smalling Jr. was charged in 2013 with falsification of account and conspiracy to defraud after he was accused of colluding with a motorist who the police busted with the document in his possession. It was said that he cloned and issued a document to the motorist. It was later revealed that the owner of the motor vehicle with the original documents did not apply for a substitute sticker. When the matter was called up, Smalling's attorney, Dimitri Adams, informed the court that his client had already been charged and acquitted for the same offense. States of emergency still needed to effectively control crime, says Olness. Despite seeking to assure Jamaicans that adequate measures are being implemented to ensure their security, following the discontinuation of the states of emergency, the government continues to suggest that crime and violence can only be brought under control at this time with the use of that particular anti-crime measure. Prime Minister Andrew Olness argued on Sunday that the states of emergency allowed for the strategic deployment of law enforcement to deal with criminal gangs. Mr. Olness, speaking at the so-called 10,000 men march in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, said without these special interventions, the Jamaica Constabulary Force is limited in its ability to conduct thorough investigations leading to convictions because the police has to now be split between investigation and maintaining public order. He declared that the police do have the resources that it stands right now to do both and do them effectively, in addition to all the other things that the police is called on to do. In January 2018, the government imposed what turned out to be a year-long state of public emergency in the western parish of St. James to combat a dramatic increase in serious crimes including murders in the parish. Two other such emergency declarations followed in the St. Catherine North Police Division and sections of the corporate area later in the year. All three came to an end earlier this year following the refusal of the parliamentary opposition to continue supporting more periodic extensions of these measures. Popular Westmoreland businessman shot dead in Savlamar. A popular Westmoreland businessman was shot and killed as he was about to open his business establishment in the parish on Saturday morning. A woman was also shot and injured during the attack. The deceased has been identified as 68-year-old Gladstone Lloyd Clark of Deans Valley in the parish. Reports are that about 8.56 a.m., Clark was in the process of opening his business place on a plaza in the parish capital, Savamar, when he was pounced upon and shot by an unknown assailant, resulting in injury also a female who was nearby. The police were summoned, and on their arrival, Clark was found suffering from gunshot wounds. Both injured persons were taken to hospital, where Clark was pronounced dead. Investigators are yet to establish a motive for the shooting. Brewing tension between police chief and some cops over new appointment. There is rising tension between the police commissioner, Major General Anthony Anderson, and some members of the Jamaica Defense Force, JCF, over the reported appointment of a former Jamaica Defense Force JDF officer to a senior rank in the police force. The issue will be high on the agenda to meeting between the Police Federation members and the commissioner set for 1 p.m. yesterday. News of the appointment has already created some amount of disquiet among members of the Island Security Force who have described the development as a slap in the face of the hardworking members of the JCF. In response, a senior member of the police high command said there was nothing unusual about the appointment as some members of the JCF were claiming. 
The appointment of the former JDF member to the rank of assistant superintendent is not unusual. In fact, the former JDF member served as a staff sergeant, which when compared would be equivalent to the rank of inspector in the JCF, said the senior cop who asked not to be named. Also in the past, several experts have entered the JCF via this route at the rank of assistant superintendent, added the senior cop. Meanwhile, another police source who asked not to be named said, the man who was appointed to the senior rank in the JCF was a personal driver of the police commissioner when they were both serving as members of the JDF. The appointment of the former JDF member occurred in January of this year. It has also been claimed that before he was appointed to the rank of assistant superintendent, the former JDF officer served as a district constable. Allegations are that following his resignation as a district constable, he was appointed based on recommendations made to the Police Service Commission by senior members of the High Command. Sources claim the recommendations were made by the Police Commissioner. The development has created unease among some members of the JCF, who are claiming that a lot of qualified long-serving officers were overlooked in the appointment. The reported close relationship between the police commissioner and the former JDF officer is also part of the bone of contention. A senior member of the JCF said that the tensions came about because of misunderstanding on the path of some members of the JCF. The explanation by the senior member of the high command has done little to quell the anger of some members who have argued that, despite his rank in the JDF, the officer should not have been allowed to enter the JCF at such a rank without sitting an exam or without being trained in the fundamental understanding of the laws of the country and actual application of such laws. Which poll is right? Which of the two poll results are right? This is a question being asked after the results of two separate opinion polls on the weekend pointed to both Anne-Marie Vaz, who will be representing the Jamaica Labour Party JLP, and Damien Crawford, for the standard bearer for the People's National Party PMP, in the upcoming by-election for the East Portland constituency, both winning by comfortable margins. The by-election to be held on April 4 was triggered by the murder of the sitting Member of Parliament, the PMP's Dr. Linvale Bloomfield. According to a poll conducted on behalf of the PMP by the Caribbean Development Research Service Incorporated, CARDIS, 53% of respondents gave the, J gave the PMP the thumbs up, with the JLP trailing more than 25 points behind. Cardis was described by the PMP as a leading regional polling organization, which correctly predicted election results in Barbados, Antigua, and Grenada. The PMP in a statement on Sunday said Crawford has majority support and approval in the constituency, while support and approval for the JLP candidate is lagging, as overall the majority of respondents said they are unhappy with the representation so far. In terms of party standing, the poll found that the PMP would receive 53% of the total popular vote, while the JLP would receive 27% if the election was held at the time the surveys were conducted. The Cadres poll result represents a 26% difference between pledge support for the two main parties, with 20% declining to answer the question. The poll, which canvassed 612 respondents, was said to have a margin of error of plus or minus 5%. Meanwhile, a poll conducted by a veteran pollster, Bill Johnson, on behalf of the Jamaica Observer newspaper, found that Vaz would win the by-election by a comfortable 10% margin over Crawford. While the Johnson Observer poll was noted to have been conducted on March 1 and 2, the PMP did not give dates for when the poll that was done on its behalf was conducted. The Johnson Observer team got feedback from 480 respondents and the poll was said to have had a margin of error of plus or minus 4.5%. 33% of the respondents said they would definitely vote for the JLP. 4% said they would probably vote for the JLP, while 25% said they would definitely vote for the PMP and 2% said they would probably vote for the PMP. Johnson said that when the definite and probable votes were tallied, the JLP would enjoy a majority of 37%, compared to the PMP's 27%, amounting to a lead of 10%. 18% of the respondents said they were undecided, while 18% indicated that they would not vote. When asked to give reasons for their preferences, Johnson said 37% of those who indicated that they would vote for the JLP 
said they would do so because the governing party was doing a good job and making progress. 26% said they were supporters of the party and that their loyalty was a family tradition. 16% felt that the JLP is better than the PMP, while 17% said that Vaz is a good representative. Of those who were certain that they would vote for the PMP, 43% said they were supporters and that their endorsement was a family tradition. 20% said the party would do a good or better job than the JLP, while 11% said the PMP cares about people. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.